smiling with us. Got some violence with us. Hi everybody! Today we have a special guest on Cosmopolit TV. He has his own fashion business in the US. His name is Ted and he's staying here in Almaty and we are going to meet him in just in two minutes. We are on air. Great, great. <laughs> yeah, first of all, uh, tell us please about your background, uh -huh. where you're from exactly and where do you live now in yeah. the US? So I grew up in this small town of Edmonds, Washington. It's a small coastal town about 20-30 minutes away from Seattle, Washington. So grew up in this very small environment, um, was always into fashion. Some of my earliest memories my mom told me was they used to buy me gifts for uh, you know, Christmas. They would buy these nice clothing from like Nordstrom's, which is a local store. And she was so excited to style me and buy these nice gifts for the little kid. But uh, for me, I didn't really like it. I didn't like having other people buy stuff for me. You know, I wanted to go choose it on my own. I had my own sense of style from a younger age. That's what my mom kind of told me uh, when we were reminiscing back when I was a younger kid. So I knew I had this kind of uh, entrepreneurial mindset from a young age. My grandfather, he owned a hotel in downtown Seattle. Uh, my father, he owns his own uh, psychology practice as well. So. The business blood was always in me and then I always showed this strong uh, passion towards the fashion industry and later uh, went to high school, finished um, my education in San Francisco. So I wanted to kind of get out, meet new people, meet new cultures, experience new friends. Um, so I went to San Francisco not knowing anyone, tried to like, you know, really establish myself away from my home, away from my comfort zone and uh, went to the University of San Francisco for two years. Um, it was really good, helped build a solid foundation um, through the business. I took entrepreneurship, marketing, uh, joined a business fraternity, was able to kind of network with other students. Why in US you are so interested in doing business? Yeah, Why yeah. not just an employer, employee? It's easier. Yeah, 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 no, it's true. Um, for me, I like to be I like to be a boss. I like to make decisions. I like to influence, you know, people and get my ideas out. And it's hard to do that when, you know, you are working full time for someone else, working so hard for someone else's vision that you may you may not even have uh, contact with. You know, a lot of these corporations, there's so many different levels and to really be to get to the top and, you know, to be in those super influential points it takes years and years to get there so with entrepreneurship you kind of cut through that and you go to the top but you also have to build your own brand as well now since everyone has access to the internet you know you can create your own digital marketing marketing agency you can create your own clothing line you can market to people from san francisco into london and you know um uh, the east you know wherever you want to market you can you don't have to physically be there anymore so you can, um, you know, break down all these barriers as well. But what about the risks? Mm -hmm. You could go bankrupt, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely, uh, that's very true. Um, pretty much how I started was, you know, you, you don't take, you don't bite off more than you can chew, pretty much. And, you know, I first started in high school at my uh, high school, uh, Archbishop Murphy in Everett, Washington. And I just started making hoodies, you know, I just as kind of like a... You know, just like a hobby, just kind of messing around. I made these hoodies with, you know, my logo on it, started selling them, kind of wearing them, you know, showing people and they're like, wow, like, this is a good idea. You know, you should like really push it forward. And then I started thinking about it. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm pretty passionate about this. I like the ideology behind it. I like the style. I think I have a vision. So that's where it kind of developed. And, you know, first it was five hoodies and it was 10 hoodies and it was 20 hoodies and you kind of snowball it until you are you know, a self-reliant company, you know, so some people can just dive right in, you know, like the Silicon Valley where there's millions of dollars and, you know, it just like blows up, you know, relatively overnight. But for, you know, the common entrepreneur, just start testing your market and, you know, just start putting things out like local flea markets um, online, you know, it costs really nothing to put up a website. So, um, and then you have Instagram, you have Facebook, so you have all these marketing platforms that you can use. So relatively, it's not that expensive to start a business. So uh, you graduated from your university mm -hmm. and then you just started your business. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So it was, um, it was actually in high school, um, but actually now since I'm graduated, now it's where it's full time, um, because until then it was more part time, just kind of you know, uh, it was a, it was a business, but more of a hobby. You know, I had other jobs I did, I had schoolwork I had to do. So now since I don't have schoolwork anymore, the the load is kind of like lifted off my shoulders, and now I'm like full time. Um, it's time to make it happen now. Mm -hmm. So could you describe just step by step? Yeah. What did you do just uh -huh. to have what you have now? Oh man, we could be here for hours telling you that. Um, it's definitely uh, a lot of mistakes. Um, I think that's the biggest thing, is just making a lot of mistakes. You don't have to know everything. Um, do your research. Um, hang out with older people. Hang out with people that you know are 10 years older, 20 years older than you. See how they work. See how they talk about things. You know, I've had great mentors, you know, in Nazim and um, one of my first mentors was uh, Braun Austin. He does his own custom suits in Dallas, Texas. So I had these really great business minds to help mold me and kind of see how they act in their business setting. And then I take what they do and try and replicate it in my own style. And just having all these great motivators helped me develop and mature as a person. And With what did you start? Just first of all, was it uh, just a website? Or? Yeah, yeah. So pretty much it was just word of mouth. At first, um, it was literally me and my friend Andrew, we were just like riding around um, in the back. Uh, we just had hoodies in the back seat and people on Facebook saw the pictures and they're like, oh, I want this color, that color. And we would just ride around and you know, just give them, sell them for cash. And then kind of like that, you know, everything was locally screen printed and it was helping your local business. So it was nice. You know, we developed a little community there as well. So. It was great. Um, we started that, and then things started to pick up. I wanted to, you know, make a website, do like photo shoots, and you know, as I matured, the quality got better of the photo shoots and the, the garments and all that. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been great. You know, my, then I was able to do a production in China, which was you know my first time doing like a huge scale production, and you know, it was it was great. There's things I definitely learned about quality. And you know, just working with businesses overseas, but um, now I'm trying to do more. Uh, everything's locally made, locally sourced. You know, from Los Angeles, San Francisco, and they're handmade in my studio in San Francisco. Um, so that's great. It's more like um, we can control the quality, so it's better. Um, and we're putting out more limited pieces, so it's more exclusive. And uh, you have to buy it quicker, you know, because there's not going to be a lot of um, items out there. There's not going to be a lot of pieces out there. So you design yourself, yeah? Um, so I, I conceptualize everything. My, uh, my beautiful girlfriend, Tanya, she uh, went to school for design and she sews everything by hand. Um, she is just, uh, she's like a machine. Um, the way that she can like cut the patterns, do the finishes on things. It looks like, uh, you know, it was made in a manufacturer. I'm a f a bras, what up? Pakistan, what up? collection uh, the garments were made uh, I believe they were made in China and then they were screen printed in a local shop in Washington so we were just literally doing them order by order you know as soon as someone would order something um, I would go make it for them and it was just like one by one you spent your own money or your parents helped you? um, that was my own money um, I just was all my life I was just saving money in a bank account I didn't know what I was gonna save it for uh, I thought it was gonna be for a car um, and then I just kind of realized, you know, that this money was here for me to pursue my passion and I had this extra money. So the best investment you can make is investing in yourself. So I took that money and just started, you know, getting legal work done, you know, to, uh, prototype this and get it uh, trademarked as well. So it was legally secure. Um, so paying lawyers, you know, it was expensive, but it was worth it because I wanted to make sure that I was protected. and. Um, I knew that this brand was going to be uh, very long, you know, and it was going to have a long uh, lifetime. So I wanted to get all the, you know, legal work done in the beginning to make sure that in case, you know, it was going to get big, it would be completely protected. Uh, did you have any times when you just um, uh, wanted to give everything up? Yeah, oh, all the time, all the time, um, all the time, yeah. Even so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a common thing, you know. Um, it doesn't happen as much, you know, because I realize, you know, the power of your mind, you know, you have to, like, feed it positivity and, you know, have 
very good outcome. And, you know, some bad thing might happen, but you just got to focus on, you know, whether it's like a huge positive thing in your life right now or a little small thing, just focus on the positive because there's always positive in something, you know, and when you see someone, you know, doing so well, supposedly, because social media is this mirror, you know, you look at it and it's like these perfect pictures, but you don't really know what goes on behind closed doors. And if you start looking at yourself saying like, oh, wow, this brand is so big, they have so many customers, they're making so much money, how will I ever get to that level, you know, I should just give in, you know, like, Zara can like copy my brand and they'll sell it and no one will care about my brand, you know, so like, there's definitely things, but, you know, you just have to be so confident in your own vision and your own, like, yeah, there's all these great brands out there, but, you know, I know Classic is one of its own. I know the methodology and the ideology behind it is something someone else can't replicate because this is my life and this is something I firmly believe in. So if you have that strong moral message, then it really helps you uh, be confident, you know, and you just try and have like the horse blinders on and just focus on what you need to do to better yourself every day. A lot of people say they want to be an entrepreneur. A lot of people say they want to have their own clothing brand, but they don't want to put their own money. They don't want to put in their work. They want to be in the club, you know, drinking champagne and like having all these like lavish lifestyle, but they don't want to put the work in to get to that. Is it easy to register uh, entrepreneurship in the US? What yeah, you... it is, it is. Um, so what you can do is you can register as a sole proprietorship and that basically makes um, you the sole uh, reliability or uh, reliant on the company. So there's no boundary between you and the company. So um, it's the quickest way you just register to be your social security and you can just do business as, you know, your, your own name or you can be doing business as someone else's or, you know, whatever your business name is. And um, it's very easy to do. Um, that's what I recommend for smaller businesses. Uh, if you're someone that's going to be, uh, has a little bit more personal liability and assets that you're worried that if you get sued or someone's going to come after you, you may want to go with an LLC and that kind of makes your business separate from your own entity. So that way if your business collapses or something happens where you get sued for the business, people can't come over you personally. So there's different ways to do it and there's, you know, corporations and such and, um, uh, which great, the great thing about entrepreneurship and kind of being a small business is you can write off a lot of things. So if you keep your receipts, um, there's a certain amount of things you can d uh, deduct, you know, uh, travel, uh, gas mileage, um, meals, um, you know, costs uh, for like inventory and all that. You can write it off so that your taxable income is lower or, you know, you can report a loss so that your business may get money even back. So your business gets paid, you know. Um, because you put $20,000 into the business, you may get a certain amount of money back um, because you invested in that. So um, definitely, you know, I would do more research on it, but there's a lot of different options you can go for a small business in the United States. What about the taxes? So they are really low, but how much? Um, so it depends, you know, at certain tax brackets, um, uh, the income tax, um, it's usually, you know, a quarter. So it is, you know, uh, it is quite a bit, you know, so it is like a quarter of your income that you can, um, you know that they'll take away but it depends you know it's all about the deductions because if you can write off things you can get your taxable income very low so that way you go into a bottom tax bracket um, that's kind of like the issues that these huge corporations um, you know in America are kind of you know getting a lot of bad publicity because they ha they make millions of dollars but they have all these write-offs so they pay very little in taxes and you know there's a lot of turmoil with that so um, you want to make sure that you are uh, also paying your taxes because they are, the IRS is very on that and, you know, they will find you, especially if you're, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, a lot of people, you know, get into big issues of penalties and, you know, you got to make sure that if you're doing sales tax as well, you're keeping the sales tax in a separate account so that way when it comes to paying your taxes, you, uh, all that tax you charged on your purchases is sitting in an account and it's ready to pay as opposed to if you just lump it all together, that tax money might get spent and then when it comes to tax season, you have to owe, you know, a certain amount of money, you have no money in the bank and then it can get some, you know, a tricky situation. Yeah, but, but anyway, uh, mm -hmm. government supports yeah, yeah, every there is. businessman. And there is, country. there is. And um, what's the greatest thing, what I re recently found out is a lot of uh, um, business uh, resources, you know, there's a lot of, you know, mentors, you can, a lot of free stuff, you know, a lot of videos, a lot of workshops, you can 
attend and um, mentors you can talk to and business plans. You know, if you need help writing a business plan, you don't know how to do, you know, a SWOT analysis. You don't know how to come up with your target market. You know, how do I, uh, you know, come up with a logo and all that. There's like all these resources. So literally they give you the infrastructure and you just need to put everything in. Um, you know, it is a lot of work, but all the resources are there. So um, it, to have any excuse not to start a business, it's really hard because there's so much free stuff out there, especially on the internet with like YouTube and, you know, all this just great free content, you know, because a lot of these business professionals, they give a lot of content out for free. Uh, at what age did you become a businessman? Oh, man. Uh, when I was young, I uh, probably started when... Probably like middle school, like second grade, third grade, I would have like my lemonade stand outside, you know, in the summer. Like during the summer, some kids you know, would, you know, play in the, you know, the water park or, you know, hang out with friends. But like I was, I wanted to sell lemonade and like, you know, not just lemonade, but have like different snacks. And then eventually it was like different little items there and like really kind of expand, you know, not just sell one product, offer multiple products to your customers. So there's more diversity, you can have more people. So if you didn't like lemonade, you may like, you know, little cakes or you may want to buy a book. So it was like really expanding, you know, the small minded, like common lemonade stand and kind of blowing it up. And I was really into that, you know, just seeing how, you know, people will pay you for, you know, a good product and, then also I tried to do my own like truffle business, like making little truffles and experimented with that. And uh, I, I, it was a good experience, you know, but I realized that my heart wasn't a hundred percent into it. You know, I kind of dived into the food industry a little bit, but my passion wasn't there. You know, I liked it, but I, I wasn't up, you know, at midnight or 1 a.m., you know, like thinking about recipes and all that. But for fashion, I was always styling and you know, always thought about, you know, fashion and that aspect, and that's what kind of pushed me to start my own collection. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in your field, uh, mm -hmm. um, is there a really big competition? Mm -hmm. Do you have a lot yeah, of Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of competition, you know, there's um, everyone, you know, everyone can start their own brand now. It's very cheap. Um, you know, things, there's pre-made shirts, you can get it screen printed, and then boom, you have your own brand. So, um, there's a lot of competition, there's a lot of saturation. Um, and especially with Zara and H&M, they allow you to have access to these runway pieces and kind of imitation pieces like that. You know, every two weeks they have new products. So it's like you have to compete with that as well, you know, because, you know, people won't get why yours is so much more expensive and that whole issue with, you know, making things, you know, uh, at a high turnover rate. So you can see it on the runway one week and then in one week um, it's going to be at Zara and you may have something that's similar to Zara and someone might go buy it at Zara because they have the whole vertically integrated company and it's very cheap, very inexpensive for them to do that. They have mass marketing and they just kind of have more money so they can kind of, you know, bump out all these little small brands, you know. But um, that's where if you're more uh, or kind of careful with how you market things, where um, comes down to quality as well. If people know that they come to your store and they can get you know a high quality jacket, they can get a, a nice pair of pants, um, then they're gonna create brand loyalty and then that'll create people to come to your brand, you know. And I'm um, starting out, you have to give away stuff to free, you have to give stuff away for free, you know, because people are like, uh, I don't know, you know, it's a new brand. It could be a bad product, could be good. So sometimes you have to like, you know, give discounts you have to give stuff out to influencers, social media people, so that they'll wear the stuff and then their whole kind of ecosystem will, um, you know, draw towards your product if they say that it's good because, you know, people like to follow other style leaders, you know, whether it's celebrities or these bloggers or, you know, just kind of creative people on Instagram or Facebook. So now, uh, are you a big company? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm very small. I'm very small, you know. Um, we're now making pieces that are probably like eight pieces total, you know, just very small. Um, because I went big, I made a huge production and um, it was just like a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of inventory. Because overseas you have to have high minimums, very high, you know, that are like 500 pieces. You know, to me it's very high, but to, you know, the Chinese company that's like super, super low. And they can make the same amount of money doing your production as, um, it takes the same amount of time to do my production as it takes to do like 2,000. So they want to maximize their efficiency. 
So that's why they don't really take on these small companies. Do you have any an analytics? Uh, uh, which country mm. is your main client? <laughs> so right now it is San Francisco. San Francisco. Um, but as I'm talking to other people, you know, I'm, I'm really looking to get into the Nordic states, you know, like Sweden, um, Finland, um, because from what I've been talking about is that they have very, um, you know, like Acne Studios, um, Cheap Monday Jeans, like these are very minimal. They have this like color blocking, high quality fabrics, and that's how people, you know, in the Nordic countries dress. So that's one region that I'm really looking forward to. Um, New York as well. New York is just always, they just appreciate good quality stuff, good quality garments. So New York is another demographic I'm looking into. Um, I'm starting to push myself away from San Francisco because um, people just don't kind of get it. And I don't want it to be a San Francisco brand. It's a global brand. Um, it's just for the global uh, modern man. Uh, did you make any research about um, doing business in, for example, Sweden or something? Like that? uh, that's what I'm currently looking at right now. Um, that's something I'm really excited about. Um, just how to kind of reposition your brand as a global brand. Um, because, you know, I know there's issues with customs and all that. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I'm definitely looking into for these further collections and like really start to market outside the country as opposed to within San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you're just investigating. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Investigating now. Yeah, because um, it just recently happened. You know, I was talking to someone, especially on this trip too, you know, just seeing like, you know, how powerful Italy is with like, you know, garment making and, you know, how authentic and... Uh, high class things are from Italy, you know, so definitely looking into maybe Italian manufacturing and then, you know, positioning it in various global regions as well. Um, and then, um, yeah, because I was talking to someone from, he, he grew up in Sweden and he was telling me, you know, I was showing him some of my recent collection. He was like, yeah, this would be great, you know, this is how people dress, you know, it's just very monochromatic and um, they like to layer a lot. So it definitely fit kind of my aesthetic. So now I'm trying to like, you know, see what influencers are over there, trying to do targeted marketing on you know, Instagram, Facebook. Mm -hmm. So do you see many perspectives in Kazakhstan? Yeah, no, in Kazakhstan it's incredible, you know, there's a lot of fashionable people. Um, people are, you know, like walking down the street, there's a great street style, you know, with the furs and um, the uniforms, you know, and people, you know, we were went to a cell phone store and, you know, the ladies had these nice uniforms and they were in high heels, you know, and, and in the States, you know, People will have work at a cell phone store that have like you know mustard stain or like stains on their shirts and all that. So it's just it's very, um, it's the class level here is really great. The taste level is great. Um, the tailoring is great. You know, there's not a lot of you know bagginess. It fits well, and um, I like the dark colors. A lot of dark colors and um, people very are very fashionable. I don't know if they do it intentionally or it's just you know because it's cold out, so you have to wear you know, layers, but um, they're doing a very good job. I'm very impressed. And Could you describe uh, your next collection? It's a little bit thicker. It's almost made out of like a hoodie. It's even thicker than this. Um, it was uh, thick material, you know, because I was looking at San Francisco and you know, it's sunny, but it's windy and it's really cold. It has a really wind chill, you know, so it'll be nice outside, but it's very cold. So sometimes you don't want to wear a jacket. Sometimes you don't want to be up all these layers. You want to just wear a shirt so you're a little bit lighter. Um, so that's where it kind of um, inspired me to make something that was thicker. So something that doesn't wrinkle as easy. So that, you know, if you're wearing a seat belt, it doesn't like get all crinkly here and you can like steam it once and iron it once and like it holds its crease and it looks professional. Could you tell uh, something, anything to people who dream of uh, doing business in the U.S.? For example, our Kazakhstani young people who now are just dreaming to go to the U.S. Maybe to win a green card yeah, yeah, and yeah. start business there. Maybe yeah. you have some piece of advice for them? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it is quite a lengthy process with the green card because um, my girlfriend, she's actually a citizen of India. So she's actually getting a green card uh, next year. So um, her green card almost took 10, I think it was like going on eight years, eight, nine years. And then, um, you know, my mom, her, she had her brother, her brother, you know, applied for a green card and that took nine, 10 years. So it's a definite lengthy process. Um, but I think um, you definitely want to get connected with someone in the United States, because if you have an anchor in the United States, you know, a point of contact, 
a point of reference that puts you ahead of everyone else. So that somehow get involved, you know, if you know someone that travels frequently to the United States or someone that knows someone that's a dual citizenship or dual citizen, definitely uh, you want to get in contact with them because then you can understand how they did their process and then um, you'll be able to, you know, start the process. And um, also if you have family members, if you can figure out if you have any distant family members that you may or may not know if that are already in the United States, um, or you can try and get a different citizenship, you know, maybe a part of the European Union or maybe Canada, try and get a citizenship there. And then as you know, a Canadian citizen or, you know, a European Union citizen, then try and apply as a United States citizen. So there's just different aspects, you know, that you can look at, but definitely um, seeing in your local community who is, because there has to be someone, you know, everyone that seems, the United States is such a huge melting pot. Every, everyone's from everywhere, you know, and people are constantly traveling. So there, there, there must be, you know, local people that you can talk to. Um, but if not, try and do your research online, um, seeing, you know, if there's like a local designer, you know, in a certain part of, you know, San Francisco, New York, Los Angeles, wherever, you know, uh, social media makes it very easy for us to contact people and you can, you know, email people, contact them, see how, you know, you can do a mentorship, you can get, uh, you know, a work visa, you can come study. Um, I think that would probably be the best, you know, to work towards citizenship is, you know, to get like a, a work permit or, you know, try and study within the United States if you can, um, that kind of gets your foot in the door. Um, but if you are a foreigner and mm -hmm. you just don't want to change your citizenship, mm -hmm. is it easy to start business in the U.S.? Or if you don't, um, so yeah, it would be kind of, for me, I, I can't speak um, mm -hmm. intently on this, um, but yeah, it would, if you aren't a U.S. citizen, it would be a little bit more difficult just because you wouldn't receive benefits, per se, because as a U.S. citizen, um, you receive, you know, certain uh you know, we have different social security, social welfare type of benefits for certain, you know, uh, income classes and, you know, uh, tax write-offs. And there's certain good things about the United States you wouldn't be able to receive because you aren't, you know, uh, a citizen. So um, it would be a little bit more difficult, um, but you can, you know, I, I've met with people here, you know, there is other places to start businesses, you know, it depends on where you what type of industry you want to be in, you know, because, you know, so maybe the U.S. isn't the best place for you to be. Maybe there's, you know, a market in, like, Italy or Japan or, you know, somewhere else in the country that would be better your, suit your interests. So, um, yeah, I would just say do your research on it. It all becomes of research and kind of, like, the more knowledge you have, the more educated decision you can make. By the way, what type of businesses are in demand in the U.S.? Oh, uh, social media, like, a lot of, like, with... Like just a lot of internet, you know, Instagram, social media marketing um, is huge. And um, it's huge, it's huge, you know, a lot of digital agencies, you know, a lot of influencers now, you know, um, if you know, you're, a, you're a model, you can get paid, you know, to like wear a backpack or wear a hoodie or, so a lot of this whole like social media fr uh, frenzy is huge in the United States and people are taking advantage of it, you know, you can be a YouTube star, you know, if you're a good singer, you don't need a record label anymore to be, uh, you know, have your voice. You can go direct to consumer now. You don't need someone else to help you out. You can just start it now all yourself. So um, definitely stuff with uh, digital. Um, also um, with like, uh, you know, kind of cryptocurrency as well is a huge thing. How like Bitcoin is like huge. Uh, I know some friends, you know, that are trying to like get into that. And that's kind of like a bumbling thing, you know, a bubbling thing in America as well. And then, um, you know, kind of like audio, uh, like uh, audio books, audio learning, audio, you know, things to do with like listening, you know, because you can be driving and listening, you know, you don't have to be like, when you read a book, you sit down and that's the only thing you can do. But now if I have like an audio book or audio, you know, podcast, podcasts are huge now. If I have a podcast, I can listen to it and, you know, work out, I can listen to it and drive to work. So you can do two things in once now because of, you know, the audio um, developments. So that's also a huge field as well. Tell us please uh, how old you are now, mm. uh, what uh, stage of your business you have by now and what are your future dreams and plans? Yeah, 
So I am only 23 years old, so I'm, I'm very young. So um, for me, to, it's, it, I feel humbled you know, to give this interview, but there's still so much to be learning you know, that I'm still learning. I feel like that's, that's the ultimate key is that you have to have a curiosity to learn and to you know, learn about different cultures, learn about things that you, know, you don't know about, you know, um, to read, you know, uh, to read books, because you know, a lot of these books, uh, I've realized that a lot of people that I look up to, the two commonalities that a lot of these people I look up to is that they read a lot and they meditate. So uh, you, have to, you have to keep a balanced life. Um, so, but for me, you know, definitely I want to make my job, you know, my brand a full-time job um, and to just make it sustainable for me and to get these messages out and to keep making better collections. And the more you um, seek knowledge, the more you're curious, the quicker you mature and pick up on things and the more, you know, influential people and people that you are older, that are older to you that have experienced more, they can give you more wisdom, you know. I think that's the most important thing is for young people to seek out mentors and to, to be hungry because like youth we have all this energy and all these creative ideas and if we find someone that believes in us we can just uh, we can develop help them develop their ideas and really help push their own creativity and then they can show us how to kind of harness that creativity and you know if we want to start our business or you know kind of show us the path a little bit and push us in the right direction. Is your business uh, your source of income now? Um, so I, I do do freelancing. I, I have multiple ways of in, income. Um, right now that's like probably like my third, fourth income, but I do a lot of freelance work, you know, with photo shoots, mm -hmm. um, styling as well. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of different, pretty much anywhere where it doesn't require me to be doing the same thing every time, you know, so um, different, you know, freelance, you know, for helping with e-commerce, styling, um, editorial, just kind of different styling aspects. And then um, ideally, I want to make classic my full time income. That's my next goal where I can just, you know, I don't, I don't have to be a rich guy because um, I because the people I have around me and the life that I'm living right now, I feel very rich, you know, just rich with, you know, just like love and just really positive, uh, just vibes and emotions. So to me, like money is just, you know, it buys you time to spend with people. So the more money you have, the more time you can just do your own thing and, you know, spend more, spend more time with your family, spend more time traveling with friends. And so, uh, I, you know, it's not about really having a bunch of money, but just having enough money so that I can, live the life of freedom, you know, just kind of have freedom to do, you know, as you please, so, um, but yeah. Okay, I wish you American dream to come through. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Thank for you. your interview. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>